in electronics, a vacuum tube, an electron tube, or just a tube, or valve is a device that controls electric current between electrodes in an evacuated container. Vacuum tubes mostly rely on thermionic emission of electrons from a hot filament or a cathode heated by the filament. This type is called a thermionic tube or thermionic valve. A phototube, however, achieves electron emission through the photoelectric effect. Not all electronic circuit valves, electron tubes or vacuum tubes, gas filled tubes are similar devices containing a gas, typically at low pressure, which exploit phenomena related to electric discharge in gases, usually without a heater. The simplest vacuum tube, the diode, contains only a heater, a heated electron emitting cathode, and a plate. Current can only flow in one direction through the device between the two electrodes. As electrons emitted by the cathode travel through the tube and are collected by the anode, adding one or more control grids within the tube allows the current between the cathode and anode to be controlled by the voltage on the grid or grids. Tubes with grids can be used for many purposes, including amplification, rectification, switching, oscillation, and display. Invented in 1904 by John Ambrose Fleming, vacuum tubes were a basic component for electronics throughout the first half of the 20th century which saw the diffusion of radio, television, radar, sound reinforcement, sound recording and reproduction, large telephone networks, analog and digital computers, and industrial process control. Although some applications had counterparts using earlier technologies such as the spark gap transmitter or mechanical computers, it was the invention of the vacuum tube that made these technologies widespread and practical. In the 1940s the invention of semiconductor devices made it possible to produce solid-state devices, which are smaller, more efficient, more reliable, more durable, and cheaper than tubes. Hence, from the mid-1950s solid-state devices such as transistors gradually replaced tubes. The cathode ray tube remained the basis for televisions and video monitors until superseded in the 21st century. However, there are still a few applications for which tubes are preferred to semiconductors, for example the magnetron used in microwave ovens, and certain high-frequency amplifiers. Classifications One classification of vacuum tubes is by the number of active electrodes. A device with two active elements is a diode, usually used for rectification. Devices with three elements are triodes used for amplification and switching. Additional electrodes create tetrodes, pentodes, and so forth, which have multiple additional functions made possible by the additional controllable electrodes. Other classifications are, by frequency range, by power rating, by cathode filament type and warm-up time, by characteristic curves design, by application, specialized parameters, tubes used to display information in addition to more specialized functions such as electron microscopy and electron beam lithography. X-ray tubes are also vacuum tubes. Phototubes and photomultipliers rely on electron flow through a vacuum, though in those cases electron emission from the cathode depends on energy from photons rather than thermionic emission. Since these sorts of vacuum tubes have functions other than electronic amplification and rectification they are described in their own articles. Description. A vacuum tube consists of two or more electrodes in a vacuum inside an airtight enclosure. Most tubes have glass envelopes, though ceramic and metal envelopes have been used. The electrodes are attached to leads which pass through the envelope via an airtight seal. On most tubes, the leads, in the form of pins, plug into a tube socket for easy replacement of the tube. Some tubes had an electrode terminating at a top cap. The principal reason for doing this was to avoid leakage resistance through the tube base, particularly for the high impedance grid input. The bases were commonly made with phenolic insulation which performs poorly as an insulator in humid conditions. 
Other reasons for using a top cap include reduced grid to anode capacitance, improved high frequency performance, keeping a very high plate voltage away from lower voltages, and accommodating one more electrode than allowed by the base. There was even an occasional design that had two top cap connections. The earliest vacuum tubes evolved from incandescent light bulbs, containing a filament sealed in an evacuated glass envelope. When hot, the filament releases electrons into the vacuum, a process called thermionic emission. A second electrode, the anode or plate, will attract those electrons if it is at a more positive voltage. The result is a net flow of electrons from the filament to plate. However, electrons cannot flow in the reverse direction because the plate is not heated and does not emit electrons. The filament has a dual function. It emits electrons when heated, and, together with the plate, it creates an electric field due to the potential difference between them. Such a tube with only two electrodes is termed a diode, and is used for rectification. Since current can only pass in one direction, such a diode will convert alternating current to pulsating DC. This can therefore be used in a DC power supply, and is also used as a demodulator of amplitude-modulated radio signals and similar functions. Early tubes used the directly heated filament as the cathode. Many more modern tubes employ indirect heating, with a separate electrically isolated heater inside a tubular cathode. The heater is not an electrode, but simply serves to heat the cathode sufficiently for thermionic emission of electrons. This allowed all the tubes to be heated through a common circuit while allowing each cathode to arrive at a voltage independently of the others, removing an unwelcome constraint on circuit design. The filaments require constant and often considerable power, even when amplifying signals at the microwatt level. Power is also dissipated when the electrons from the cathode slam into the anode and heat it. This can occur even in an idle amplifier due to quiescent currents necessary to ensure linearity and low distortion. In a power amplifier, this heating can be considerable and can destroy the tube if driven beyond its safe limits. Since the tube contains a vacuum, the anodes in most small and medium power tubes are cooled by radiation through the glass envelope. In some special high-power applications, the anode forms part of the vacuum envelope to conduct a heat to an external heat sink, usually cooled by a blower. Clistrons and magnetrons often operate their anodes at ground potential to facilitate cooling, particularly with water, without high-voltage insulation. These tubes instead operate with high negative voltages on the filament and cathode. Except for diodes, additional electrodes are positioned between the cathode and the plate. These electrodes are referred to as grids as they are not solid electrodes but sparse elements through which electrons can pass on their way to the plate. The vacuum tube is then known as a triode, tetrode, pentode, etc., depending on the number of grids. A triode has three electrodes, the anode, cathode, and one grid, and so on. The first grid, known as the control grid, transforms the diode into a voltage control device. The voltage applied to the control grid affects the current between the cathode and the plate. When held negative with respect to the cathode, the control grid creates an electric field which ripples electrons emitted by the cathode, thus reducing or even stopping the current between cathode and anode. As long as the control grid is negative relative to the cathode, essentially no current flows into it. Yet a change of several volts on the control grid is sufficient to make a large difference in the plate current possibly changing the output by hundreds of volts. The solid-state device which operates most like the Pento tube is the junction field effect transistor. Although vacuum tubes typically operate at over 100 volts, unlike most semiconductors in most applications, 